There were a large number of molecules in Chapter 10 whose names and functions you should familiarize yourself with, especially how they relate to the sliding filament theory of muscle contraction. Next, review the subcellular structures that could be found within a typical muscle cell, and then figure out how those could be different between a fast twitch and slow twitch muscle fiber, and how that relates to aerobic and anaerobic respiration. There was also a fair amount of physiology to study. Most importantly, be sure to review how exercise can change muscle cells over time. This is perhaps the most relevant bit of physiology related to medicine and health. An isotonic muscle contraction could be concentric, meaning the muscle shortened when it worked, or eccentric, which could either mean the muscle lengthened despite it trying to contract, or the muscle cells were pulled in oblique directions during a contraction. It's this last type that can do the most damage to a muscle cell, tearing some of the connective tissue between cells, leading to prolonged muscle soreness. Compression garments can be used to reduce these sorts of eccentric contractions, helping to hold muscle cells parallel to one another as they work. After reviewing the sliding filament theory, we move next to a group of proteins, including one called dystrophin, which helps to link the actin filaments inside of the cell to the connective tissue outside of the cell. When dystrophin is mutated, this breaks the connection, meaning muscles can still contract, but they do not generate as much force on the bones. Just like a muscle that is not exercising, these muscles will tend to atrophy over time. The immediate extracellular matrix surrounding muscle cells is called the endomesium, which becomes the perimesium surrounding each fascicle, which becomes the epimesium surrounding the muscle organ itself, which becomes the tendon, which becomes the periosteum surrounding the bone, which even extends into bone tissue as Sharpie's fibers. There are no absolute dividing lines between any of this tissue. It is all the same dense, regular connective tissue, composed primarily of collagen fibers, the strongest of our connective tissue fibers. The contraction cycle begins when troponin and tropomyosin bind to calcium and move out of the way, exposing active sites on actin so that the head groups of myosin can bind. They will do so and ratchet one time. Next, myosin must bind to ATP in order to let go of actin, and it will burn the ATP using the energy to spring load the head group. If an active site on actin is still exposed, it will then bind to actin again, ratchet one time, and continue the cycle. This will continue until the cell runs out of ATP which happens with extreme muscle fatigue or after death. 12 hours after death, as calcium leaks out of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, this will allow myosin to bind to actin, but in the absence of ATP, it will remain bound to actin, leading to the condition called rigor mortis. This condition is not permanent. Remember, the bonds between myosin and actin are weak interactions and will ultimately degrade and later the proteins will begin to decompose. When reviewing fast twitch and slow twitch muscle fibers, remember both of these cell types will undergo aerobic respiration when oxygen is plentiful, producing roughly 36 ATP for every glucose molecule burned. However, when pushed to peak performance and oxygen levels are not adequate, either one of these cell types will switch to anaerobic respiration, producing only two ATP for every glucose burned. This is less efficient, however, more ATP can be produced all at once when undergoing anaerobic respiration, thereby producing the maximal amount of force possible. With prolonged low-intensity workouts, 
both fast twitch and slow twitch muscle fibers can generate force. However, the fast twitch muscle fibers will fatigue more quickly. Therefore, the slow twitch fibers will be getting a better workout. Conversely, with anaerobic activity, the fast twitch muscle fibers will be generating much more force than the slow twitch fibers. That is because they have more actin and myosin and larger glycogen reserves, whereas a slow twitch fiber has more mitochondria and blood supply, which is optimal for generating small amounts of force over long periods of time. Either way, exercise leads to changes in muscle cells. With a lot of aerobic activity, muscle cells will typically produce more mitochondria, release angiogenic signals, which trigger the growth of blood vessels, and also increase their myoglobin content. Conversely, anaerobic exercise will lead to the generation of more actin and myosin, as well as increasing glycogen reserves, which leads to muscle hypertrophy or growth in size. The changes seen with aerobic exercise in skeletal muscle tissue are also seen in cardiac muscle tissue, which means that this type of exercise leads to increased blood vessel growth around the heart. With more blood vessels, this leads to a reduced risk of heart attacks because the heart has a redundant blood supply. With increased muscle strength in the heart, the heart can afford to lower its resting heart rate while still pumping the same amount of blood to the body, which also increases cardiovascular health. Small amounts of damage to muscle tissue can trigger a little bit of inflammation. This will activate nearby myoblasts or stem cells to repair the damage. However, with exercise, this inflammation is also accompanied by the paracrine release of hormones such as growth hormone and testosterone. The combination of inflammatory molecules and these hormones will lead the myoblasts not only to repair the damage, but to actually increase the strength of the tissue following damage. Paracrine means that these signals are released just locally, meaning that if you exercise the biceps, you should expect the biceps to get stronger, not the triceps or quadriceps. With prolonged inactivity, the first thing that will happen to a muscle is that it will lose muscle tone, or the number of motor units that are firing at rest will decrease. This is actually a change in the nervous system. With even longer periods of inactivity, the muscle could begin to atrophy, meaning it would lose the amount of actin and myosin present within the cell, and it would decrease in strength. Furthermore, muscle cells might switch from slow twitch to more of a fast twitch type of physiology. A motor unit, remember, is one neuron plus all of the muscle cells that it controls. Typically, all of these muscle cells will be of the same fiber type. In the process of recruitment, one motor unit fires, then another, then another, until enough motor units are firing to generate the force that is required. 